Chapter 27 Rasa Tattva Sattvika Bhav Vyabhachari Bhav and Ratya Bhas The next day, when Vijay Kumar and Brajanath had honoured Prasad, they again went to Sri Radha Kant Mat, arriving just after midday. Sri Gopal Guru Goswami had also honoured Mahaprasad and was waiting for them. Sri Dayana Chandra Goswami was sitting by his side, writing Upasana Parahati, the procedures for worship. At that time, Sri Goswami's appearance was most remarkable. He was attired in the dress of a sannyasi. His forehead was marked with Urdhva Pundra Tilak. The symbols of Harinam were written on each of his limbs, and four thick strands of Tulsi adorned his neck. He held a japa mala in his hand, and at intervals streams of tears flowed onto his chest from his eyes, which were half closed in meditation. Weeping and sighing, he sometimes called out loudly, Ha Garanga, Ha Nityananda. His body was somewhat plump, and his complexion was dark and effulgent. His coconut shell cup, full of water, was standing close to the seat of banana tree bark on which he was sitting, while his two wooden sandals lay at a distance. When Vijay and Brajanath saw all this, unprecedented Shraddha arose within their hearts. They both offered their sastang pranam and remained lying on the ground for a long time. The residents of the Mutt generally respected Vijay and Brajanath, having seen their Vaishnava qualities and their scholarship and profound understanding of many Shastras, and also knowing them to be residents of Sri Navadweep Dham. Today, however, all were especially struck with wonder on seeing such ideal Vaishnava sentiments. When Guru Goswami saw them lying down and offering pranam in this way, he lifted them up, embraced them lovingly, and made them sit down close to him. Brajanath waited for an appropriate moment, and then gradually and politely raised the subject of rasa. Sri Goswami began to speak, his heart filled with prem. Today I will make you understand the subject of anubhav and so on, and cause you to enter into rasa tattva. There are four ingredients of rasa, vaibhav, anubhav, sattvika and vyabhachari. Yesterday I explained vaibhav tattva, and today I shall explain anubhav. Listen carefully. Vaibhav refers to the personalities who are the cause of rati arising. Now, anubhav refers to those visible symptoms that cause rati to become evident and by which the bhavs in the heart are realized. In other words, anubhav consists of activities such as sidelong glances and hairs of the body standing on end, which are manifest as external bodily transformations, but which actually reveal the bhavs of the heart. These internal bhavs are revealed by the following outward expressions of agitation. Dancing, nitya, rolling on the ground, viluntana, singing, gita, crying out loudly, kroshana, stretching the body and writhing, tanu motana, roaring, hunkara, yawning, drimbanu, sighing and breathing deeply, dirga shvasa, indifference to public opinion, lokana pekshita, salivaring, lala shrava, laughing loudly, atahasa, dizziness, guruna, and hiccuping, hikka. Brajanath, how can these external transformations nourish the tasting of rasa of the internal staibhav? I also have another question. At the time of tasting rasa internally, these anubhavs are manifested externally in the body. So how can they be separate and distinct ingredients of rasa? Goswami, Baba, you are indeed a real pundit of Naya Shastra. To this very day, 
no one has posed such subtle questions as you have. When I used to study Rasa Shastra in the company of Sri Pandit Goswami, exactly the same arguments would arise in my mind. However, my doubts were quickly dispelled by Sri Gurudev's mercy. The confidential significance is that the pure consciousness, Shuddha Sattva, of the Jiva, when Bhaibhav stimulates the function of consciousness, Chitta, and assists the function itself, at that time a natural wonderment, Vaichitya, arises, which makes the heart blossom in various ways, and this in turn causes some outward transformations to become evident in the body. These external transformations, such as dancing, are called Udbhashwara, and there are many types. When the heart dances, the body also begins to dance, and when the heart sings, the tongue also sings. You should understand the action of other transformations in the same way. However, the action of Udbhashwara is not the original action. Rather, the Anubhavs that arise and nourish the Vaibhavs then spread throughout the body in the form of Udbhashwara. As soon as the Staibhav in the heart is stimulated by the Vaibhav, Anubhav begins its function as another action of the heart. Thus Anubhav is a separate individual ingredient. When this is revealed through activities such as singing, it is called cooling, shita, and when it is revealed through activities such as dancing, it is called throwing, shapana. There are also many other symptoms of anubhav, such as swelling of the body, oozing of blood, and separation and contraction of the bone joints, which are very rarely seen, so I will not elaborate upon them any further. The extremely astonishing anubhavs that were seen in the body of my Praneshwara, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, such as becoming like a tortoise, are not possible in Sadak Bhaktas. After Vijay and Brajanath had heard these confidential instructions of Guru Goswami, they remained silent for some time, and then asked, Prabhu, what is Sattvic above? Goswami, the word Sattva refers to the Chitta, pure heart or consciousness, that is stimulated by any bhav in relation to Krishna, either directly or with some obstruction. The bhavs that are born from this sattva are called sattvika bhavs. There are three types of sattvika bhavs, smooth, snigda, smeared, digda, and rough, ruksha. Brajanath, what is snigda, smooth sattvika bhavs? Goswami, Snigda Sattvika Bhav has two divisions, Mukya, primary, and Gona, secondary. Mukya Snigda Sattvika Bhav occurs when Mukya Rati, that is directly in relation to Krishna, overpowers the heart. Examples of Mukya Snigda Sattvika Bhav are becoming stunned, perspiring, and so on. Gona Snigda Sattvika Bhavs arise from an invasion of the heart by Gonarati, when Krishna is at some distance or there is some obstruction. Two examples of Gona Sattvika Bhavs are fading of the bodily color, Vaivarnya, and faulting of the voice, Swara Bade. Smeared, Digda Sattvika Bhav, arises when any Bhav other than the function of Mukyarati and Gonarati overwhelms the heart. Trembling is an example of digda, smeared sattvika bhavs, that follow on from rati. Sometimes, when someone who only appears to be a bhakta hears about the extremely wonderful and sweet bhavs of Krishna, he becomes astonished and experiences elation, although he actually has no rati. This is the third type of sattvika bhav, which is known as rough, ruksha. An example of ruksha sattvika bhav is seen when the hairs of the body stand on end, romancha. Brajanath, 
How does sattvic above arise? Goswami. When the heart, chitta, of the sadhak becomes saturated with sattva bhav, pure emotion related to Krishna, it submits itself to the life air, pran. Then, when the pran has been excited, it is transformed and causes the appearance of profuse agitation in the body. At that time, the bodily transformations, such as stumba, becoming stunned, occur. Brajanath, how many types of sattvika transformations are there? Goswami, there are eight sattvika transformations, namely becoming stunned, stumba, perspiration, sveda, horripulation, romancha, faltering of the voice, swarabhade, trembling, vipatu, transformations of the bodily color, vivarnya, such as distress and thinness, which occur due to emotions such as despair, fear and anger, shedding tears, ashru, and devastation, pralaya. Under some circumstances, the life air, pran, remains as the fifth element, air, along with the other four elements, earth, water, fire and sky. However, sometimes when it predominates, that is, when it situates itself in the air, vayu, element, it travels throughout the body of the jiva. When pran comes in contact with the earth element, inertness, stumba, occurs. When it takes shelter of the water element, tears, ashru, appear. When it is situated in the fire element, change in bodily color, vaivarnya, and perspiring, sveda, are evident. When pran takes shelter of the sky element, loss of consciousness or devastation, pralaya, occurs. And when pran is self-dominating and takes shelter of the air element, the transformed conditions of horripulation, romancha, trembling, vipattu, and faltering of the voice, swarabhade, are manifested. Depending on whether the degree of strength of pran is mild, moderate, or intense, respectively. Since these eight transformations are active both internally and externally, they are sometimes called bhav and sometimes anubhav. However, the anubhavs, such as dancing, rolling on the ground and singing, are not considered the same as sattvika bhavs, because they are only active in the outer body. The anubhav activities, such as dancing, are not the results of bhav arising from sattva, that is, sattvika bhav. Rather, the activity is instigated by the application of intelligence. However, in transformations, such as becoming stunned, sattvika bhav acts directly without relying on the intelligence. For this reason, anubhav and sattvika bhav are considered to be separate and distinct ingredients. Brajanath, I would like to know the cause of asta sattvika transformations such as stumba, becoming stunned. Goswami, stumba is a state in which one becomes inert without speaking or having any other activity and it is caused by jubilation, fear, astonishment, dejection, regret, anger and weariness. Sveda, perspiration, is moistness of the body caused by jubilation, fear, anger and so on. Romancha, standing of the bodily hairs, arises from astonishment, jubilation, enthusiasm and fear. Swarabhad, faltering of the voice, occurs due to despair, wonder, anger, jubilation and fear. Vipatu, trembling, is caused by fear, anger, jubilation and so on. Vivarnya, change in bodily color, is due to emotions such as despair, anger and fear. Ashru, tears, come from the eyes through the influence of jubilation, anger, despair and other emotions. Tears of joy are cool, whereas tears of anger are warm. In the state of pralaya, devastation, one is bereft of activity and knowledge, 
and he becomes senseless and falls on the ground. This may be due to happiness or distress. There are four types of sattvic abhavs corresponding to progressive gradations of sattva, purity. These are called smoking, dumayita, alight, jvalita, and burning, dipta, and blazing, pradipta. The ruksha, rough sattvic abhavs, are generally dumayita, smoking, whereas the snigda, smooth sattvic abhavs, gradually reach the higher stages. Rati is the cause of all astonishing anand, and in its absence there is no wonderment in the ruksha sattvic abhavs and other emotions. Rajanath Prabhu, sattvic abhavs arise by extreme good fortune, but many people make a show of these bhavs when they are playing a role in a drama or to accomplish their own tasks in worldly life. What may be said about the bhavs of such people? Goswami Sattvika bhavs that manifest naturally as one performs sadhan of sincere and pure bhakti are Vaishnava bhavs. Apart from these, whatever emotional symptoms appear can be divided into four categories. The semblance of rati, ratiabhas, the semblance of sattvika bhavs, sattvabhas, symptoms that do not arise from sattva, nisattva, and averse or contrary symptoms, pratipa. Brajanath, what is ratiabhas, the semblance of rati? Goswami, ratiabhas occurs in those who desire liberation. It arises in the impersonalist sannyasis of the Sankra Sampradaya when they hear discussions about the pastimes of Krishna. Brajanath, what is sattvabhas, the semblance of sattvic abhavs? Goswami, sattvabhas is the semblance of joy and astonishment that arises in those whose hearts naturally give rise to loose emotions. For example, the adherents of Jaran Mimamsa and ordinary women when they hear Krishna Kata. Brajanath, what is Nisattva, the semblance of Bhav that does not arise from Sattva? Goswami, Nisattva refers to symptoms such as horripulation and tears that are exhibited by people whose minds are naturally duplicit and who practice them for the sake of a dramatic performance or in order to accomplish a material objective. Some people are actually hard-hearted, but they are so practiced that they can begin to weep in an instant, as if they were genuinely crying. However, their crying is completely pretentious, and they are said to be slippery-minded. Brajanath What are adverse and contrary symptoms? Pratipa Goswami Pratipa Bhav Abhas is the semblance of Bhav that occurs because of anger, fear and other emotions resulting from activities that are unfavorable towards Krishna. Kangsa and Shishupal are obvious examples. Brajanath Prabhu, we have understood Vaibhav, Anubhav and Sattvic Abhav, as well as the difference between Sattvic Abhav and Anubhav. Now please describe the Vyabhichari Bhavs. Goswami, there are 33 Vyabhichari Bhavs. V means distinctly, Abhi means towards, and Chari means moving. These 33 Bhavs are called Vyabhichari because they move distinctly towards the Stai Bhav. They are also called Sanchari Bhavs because they are communicated through words, limbs, and sattva, and thus travel, sancharita, throughout the system. They are like waves in the nectar ocean of the staibhav, for they rise up, causing it to swell, and then they merge back into the ocean again. The thirty-three sanchari bhavs are 1. Regret or indifference, nirveda. 2. Despair, visad. 3. Humility, dainya. 4. Physical and mental debility, glani. 5. Fatigue, shrama. 6. Intoxication, 
Mada. 7. Pride, Garva. 8. Suspicion, Shankar. 9. Fear, Trasa. 10. Agitation, Aveg. 11. Madness, Unmad. 12. Confusion or absence of mind, Upashmrita. 13. Disease, Vyadi. 14. Fainting or delusion, Moha. 15. Death, Mrityu. 16. Laziness, Alasya. 17. Inertness, Jadya. 18. Bashfulness, Vrida. 19. Concealment of emotions, Avahitita. 20. Remembrance, Shmriti. 21. Deliberation or reasoning, Vitarika. 22. Anxiety, Chinta. 23. Resolve or wisdom, Mati. 24. Fortitude, Driti. 25. Jubilation, Harsha. 26. Ardent desire, Otsutkata. 27. Ferocity, Ogriya. 28. Impatience and indignation, Amarsa. 29. Envy, Asurya. 30. Restlessness, Chapalyam. 31. Sleep, Nidra. 32. Deep sleep, Supti. 33. Awakening, Bodha. Some Sanchari Bhavs are independent, Svatantra, and some are dependent, Paratantra. There are two types of dependent Sanchari Bhavs, superior, Vara, and inferior, Avara. The superior category is also divided into two types, namely direct, Sakshad, and separated or secondary, Vyavahita. The dependent Sanchari Bhavs are divided into three types, those that are devoid of Rati, Rati Sunya, subsequently contracting Rati, Rati Anuparsana, and having a trace of Rati, Rati Ganda. When these Bhavs appear in people who are averse to Krishna, or are perceived in inappropriate people or things, they are divided into two categories, namely unfavorable, Pratikulya, and improper, Anochitya. All these Bhavs have four conditions, generation, Utpati, union, Sandhi, overcoming, Subhalya, and pacification, Shanti. Brajanath, generation of Bhav, Bhav Utpati, can be easily understood. But what is union, Bhav Sandhi? Goswami, Bhav Sandhi occurs when two Bhavs, either of the same type or of different types, meet together. For example, when inertness caused by one's loved one, Ishta, and inertness caused by something else, both arise at the same time. This is an instant of the union of two identical emotions, Sarup Bhav Sandhi. Conversely, jubilation and apprehension arising simultaneously is an example of the union of two different types of Bhav, Bina Bhav Sandhi. Brajanath, what is overcoming Bhav Shabalya? Goswami, Bhav Shabalya is the clashing and jostling of many bhavs, in which one bhav suppresses another and becomes predominant. For instance, when Kangsa heard about Krishna, he became angry and fearful at the same time. This is an example of bhav shabalya. Brajanath, what is pacification, bhav shanti? Goswami, bhav shanti occurs when an extremely powerful bhav becomes pacified. When the Brajavasis could not see Krishna nearby, they were very anxious. But their apprehension was at once pacified, that is, it went far away, when they heard the sound of his vamsi. This is the pacified condition of despondency, vishad. Brajana, if we are qualified to know anything more about this subject, then please tell us. Goswami, altogether there are forty-one bhavs 
that cause transformations of the body and senses. These are the 33 Vyabhachari Bhavs, one of the Mukya Stai Bhavs, and also the seven Gona Stai Bhavs, that I shall describe later. These are all the propensities of the heart, Chittavriti, that cause Bhav to arise. Brajanath, what types of Bhav do they arouse? Goswami, they produce the Astasattvika Bhavs and the Anubhavs that come in the category of Vaibhavs. Brajanath, are all the Bhavs natural and inborn? Goswami, no, some of them are natural, while others are transitory. The Bhakta Stai Bhav is his natural Bhav, and the Vyabhachari Bhavs are transitory. Brajanath, do all Bhaktas have the same type of Bhav? Goswami, there are different types of Bhaktas according to the difference of the dispositions of their respective minds, Mano Bhavs. So there is a gradation of awakening of Bhavs, depending on the disposition of the mind. This awakening is of three types, Garishta, heavy, Lagishta, light, and Gambira, grave. However, the nature of nectar is that it is always liquid, and the heart of the Krishna Bhakta is like nectar by nature. I shall stop here for today. Tomorrow I will explain Staibhav. Vijay and Brajanath offer Sastang Dandavat to Sri Guru Goswami. Taking his permission, they left for their place of residence. Thus ends the 27th chapter of Jaiva Dharma entitled Rasa Tattva, Sattvika Bhav, Vyabhachari Bhav and Ratya Bhas.